This is gonna take Cracker Jack timing, Wang. Total concentration. You ready, Jack? I was born ready. So here on the channel lately, I've been having some conversations with Joe Corallo, kind of just about some of the failings of, of DC Comics regarding Wonder Woman. You know, maybe how they haven't done um, Iron Man so well at, at Marvel Comics. And today I want to talk about something you know, about a character that you know Marvel just can't seem to get wrong, and it's Daredevil. And I think it has a lot to do with the creators. I, I imagine we're going to get into that. Obviously, here with me to talk about that is independent writer, independent editor, award-winning editor, Joe Corallo. How are you doing? I'm all right, Wes. How are you? I'm doing much better. Things are kind of getting back to normal here. Good. And I definitely wanted to talk about one of my favorite uh, comic book superheroes. Now, Dare Daredevil uh, Born Again is my, my fourth favorite comic story of all time. Just yeah. beautifully illustrated, wonderful story. But it's shocking for Daredevil not really being like that A-list character. He's not Wolverine. He's not Spider-Man. The amount of great ca uh, creators and just really timeless epic storytelling that, that's told on this wonderful street level character it, it's shocking that marvel still gets the character right to this day yeah no it's crazy and like uh born again's one of my favorites too i even got it uh is it signed here by uh david Masakelli. it's a great guy but but yeah it's ever since frank miller revitalized the character uh, it's it's really been full steam ahead with, with Daredevil. It, it, it's interesting because yeah, you know, before that, you know, you, you you had the yellow suit very briefly, and then you had, you, you know, he he was sort of relegated to this like B C list character fighting like the Owl and Stilt Man and you, you know characters like that. But once uh, you know Frank got a hold of him, uh, he kind of elevated the character, and the character never really dipped back down after that. You know, it's interesting. Obviously, Frank Miller is one of the true artists, you know, up there with um, with Alan Moore as far as character deconstruction and how to do it correctly. Yes, you do bring the character down to his lowest point, but it's to build the character ultimately back up and, you know, to be even better than before. Yeah. And certainly, you know, uh, like Born Again, it, it's such an amazing story. And just the, some of the things that Frank Miller, the, like the audacity to do some of those <laughs> things with uh, with Carrot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like it, it's it's still shocking to this day and you know i believe that was written you know in the early 80s it's like yeah like around the mid 80s it might have been yeah. was it 86 or 87 yeah, 86. like around then yeah and then um but but you know and he he was on the book uh from the late 70s into the early 80s you, you know originally and um and then you had like some denny o'neill stuff but but yeah mm -hmm. it's um j just doing that um uh, i mean anyone who's read born again then you read something like sin city and you're like oh I, I see where where the start of this happened you know he breathed new life into this and this is also one of the rare instances in something like born again where someone left a title for like a few years came back and managed to tell one of the best stories they did with the character if not the best story they did with the character uh, it's so rare. It's it's hard to to think of uh, creators that came back and it was just as good, if not better, when they did. Just think about that. The story, it's the art by Mizu Kelly. Like, yeah, there there's some scenes in like full page, you know, art of of Daredevil in that book where I want to I want to say is like uh, Masonic or something, but he, he feels yeah. almost like an angelic figure because he's almost like a fallen angel. He's on a mission. You know, almost from God to redeem himself, or at least the sins, you know, kind of of his family and stuff. Just yeah, but a lot of symbolism in that comic. A absolutely, I, I loved uh, how they handled uh, his mother. It, it wasn't, you know, his mother being the the nun that kind of nursed him back uh, to health, and and not dwelling on it, not making it this like whole big revelation, not derailing the story over it. It's it's this moment that happens. Um, you know, the depiction of the kingpin here is uh, one of the best depictions you, you see of him. He, he's just, you know, manipulating everyone, you know, s set up in the same way that uh, Frank had done in his earlier run. But he's just so menacing. Um, it, you know, there's there's a, a scene where uh, kingpin is talking about needing to get nuke. And, and this, this was a great uh, nuke uh, appearance in, in terms of villains. But uh you know kingpin's talking about uh needing to get a hold of generals 
uh, you know, has to get in touch with the general down in like Ecuador where Nuke is to, to get him up here. And he's just mulling it over to himself like, oh, yeah, the military, I should probably put a little more uh, effort into like, uh, you know, owning a few people over there to pull some more favors in, you know, like just stuff like that. It's just he's so callous and calculating and uh, it's it's just phenomenal. It's it's crazy what you're able to do with a character in such a small setting. You know, obviously we've seen him leave uh, Hell's Kitchen here and there, but for the most part, he's been confined to that area. But I will say this: as, as great as I think the character is, and obviously uh, Frank Miller set the tone for the character, and it feels like Marvel has gotten right ever since. It, it almost does feel like they are telling kind of the same story over and over. Whoever the new writer is, he gets taken down to an all all time low. And he kind of builds him back, himself back up. But it really works for the character of Matt Murdock. I think it's because he's so sympathetic. You know, he, he is, uh, you know, blinded as a kid. He does have a handicap. He also has a crisis of faith. Yeah. You know, I think there are a lot of parts about the character that we can kind of all relate to. And you, you're rooting for him to finally win again. Yeah. I, I mean, there, there's something about Daredevil, e even redoing uh, some of those stories or, or rehashing at least similar themes because it tends to be done very well, it, it's forgiven and, and look over uh, often enough because it's an engaging story. It's a good story. Uh, it, you know, I, I mean, it's some of the best work Bendis did in his entire career. Uh, it launched Brubaker. Uh, this is some of the best work we've seen from Zdarsky. Um, it, you know, it's some of the best work uh, going back years. Uh, it's some of the best work we've seen from Andy Nocenti. You know, and, and you mentioned Denny O'Neill was on the character. Yeah. Jerry uh, Conway has been on the character. Mm -hmm. So many uh, big name writers. I, although, uh, you know, Mark Wade, maybe this was the start of his downfall at Marvel. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's not the worst thing he's he's done though. Um, <laughs> it was, it was interest. I appreciated. Uh, I never finished his run, I'll be honest, but I appreciated that idea of, all right, he he moved to, I think it was San Francisco and, and was sort of starting fresh. And I appreciated someone like Mark coming in and trying to do something fresh with the character. And, you know, let's be honest, we, we've seen other creators come in and try to do something fresh with a character that has been a like a, a total failure. But in this instance, like, it wasn't a Marvel total failure. Comics, if you decide to move your team or your character to San Francisco, it's almost a death sentence for you. Right? <laughs> it's never gonna work. <laughs> you know, it, it, it wasn't, but like it, it really, you know, it, it's not, it wasn't that bad. You, you know, it, it, it might be in the lower half of, you know, Daredevil runs, but ultimately it, it wasn't even like that bad. It, you know, it's fine. Yeah. So another thing about about uh, Matt Murdock, and obviously mm -hmm. this was introduced by Frank Miller himself, that I think a lot of people can relate to, you know, mm -hmm. male and female, is the character sure. of Elektra. Is oh, that yeah. foil that's out there? He's in love with her. He knows she's absolutely terrible for him. Every time they get together, she manipulates him. She mm -hmm. makes him do something stupid, do something he would never do in his right mind. But he can never say no. Like he can never like let go of that first love. And I think a lot of that's so relatable in the character. So every time she comes back in, even though you know what's going to happen, I'm still excited for it. Oh, yeah. What's she going to do next? Yeah. No, I, I mean, uh, Electra in general it was just such a, an incredible addition to the Daredevil mythos. Um, you know, characters like that really work when like the, the costumes like barely changed over the years because you they just got it right out the gate, you know, uh, it, and it's rare for that to happen. But um, Electra's always been an interesting character. Uh, but and, and a lot of times that, that happens too with some of these other characters. I mean, Foggy is another great example. He's yes. a great side character, kind of sidekick sometimes in a way kind of guy. And, and he also um, is, is relatable in the sense that he always gets suckered into doing something stupid that Matt Murdock wants to do. He always does it. It always bites him in the ass. And then Murdock asks him to do something again. And he's like, ah, right. I'll, I'll give up all our money to 
try to fight this like one in a million case because it's the right thing to do. Damn it, Murdoch, you know. <laughs> Another completely relatable character. We've yeah. all got that friend that will that is with you from through thick and thin. It doesn't matter the circumstances. He's like, let's do it together, I guess. So it's it's, yeah. it's a lot of what, what I think makes the character so relatable. Obviously, there are things that are not relatable about the character in lore when you think about, you know, the hand and stick. Sure. And kind of a lot of the lore they built up, but I, I think it just adds to the ambiance and just like the flavor that's all there in Hell's Kitchen. It, you know, when you mix it all together, it's just like the perfect recipe. A lot of people, you know, when they're making comparisons to, you know, DC and Marvel characters, you get a lot of people being like, oh, well, Moon Knight and Batman are very similar. I, I used to hear, but I don't hear it as much, the Daredevil Batman comparisons. But w one of the the things about you know daredevil and, and batman it's the, the sad thing is daredevil kind of gets batman right more often than batman at, at this point the there there is this like gothic almost gothic horror element to to some of uh daredevil i mean it, it makes sense when you have artists like gene colin and uh you know frank miller working on this obviously he did that and then went on to batman and sort of shaped the mythos of Batman to this day, same thing with Denny O'Neill. So it makes sense. But like the like dark brooding, you know, like daredevil sort of adventures, you know, he's just like on a rooftop and it's raining and it's just filled with these like uh, internal monologue, like captions and things like that. It feels more Batman than a lot of Batman comics. Yeah, he's just a man over watching out for his city that's that's waiting for for a reason to pounce and go out there and protect somebody. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. And yeah, the artists have, have definitely contributed so much to the character. And it's he's he's one of those characters that doesn't really need a revamp all that often. And like I know recently when Marco Cicchetto took over the character, like he put some MMA hand wraps on the character. Oh, that that's pretty cool. Kind of kind of fits what he's doing. Yeah, but you don't really need to mess with it because they, they got it so right. You know, and there's other stuff that's been a little more controversial, like that whole like um, was it An was it Andy Diggle with the Shadowlands? Was that him? Yeah, or was that someone? yeah like that. That was a, a, a storyline that, that again, it, it was different, but fans of Daredevil were kind of divided on what they thought about that run. That's nothing I, I've revisited since, but um, you, you know, but but yeah, like. With so many other characters, it's almost like the opposite, where you know you you kind of pick a couple of of runs, and then everything else you're kind of like, eh, you know, like as much as I love characters like Superman, there's really only a handful of runs that I would be like, this is a must read in a way that I think everyone would enjoy, and then everything else you're kind of like. Eh, you know, you really like it, but but Daredevil, it's almost like you can kind of read any run, and I'll I'll give you a heads up on a handful that I'd be like, don't don't worry about those, but but almost everything else is good. It's crazy, yeah, because obviously, in my opinion, Batman has the most classic stories because yeah, he just has the most stories. Period. They they do a lot of Elseworlds work, and he, so many of the best writers go and work on Batman for sure. I, you know. I, I did a video with with Yule on the channel not too long ago. We were talking about you know which char character has the best you know set of stories, and it was Batman versus Spider Man. But the the, the uh, wild card was Daredevil, not an A list character, but just has this the the breadth of great storytelling is amazing. Yeah, me personally, I, mean, I do think Frank Miller's Daredevil eclipses his work on on Batman. I think Batman Year One is amazing. Dark Knight Returns is obviously mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, Still, to, to this day, is influential in the industry. But I, I think his work on Daredevil, uh, as far as Born Again and some of his work on, like with Klaus Jansen, yeah, it eclipses it is eclipses it just as far as storytelling, in my opinion. No, uh, certainly for the breadth of work. I, I mean, for for doing a run, you know, because Frank like didn't do really a run on Batman. He he's mostly known for a, a couple of short form stories, you know. Uh, so, and then obviously he's been doing more with characters since then. Um, you know, we, we're just going to keep getting these Dark Knight sequels, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, at the time, like when, when you compare, you know, there's like 
two omnibuses worth of, uh, you know, Daredevil from Frank Miller. But, you know, really when people talk about Frank Miller's Batman, they're really only talking about, you know, Dark Knight Returns and, and Year One. So, so I'm inclined to agree with you in, in that respect. So another thing I think that every truly great transcendent superhero has to have a fantastic rogues gallery. If you think about, uh, obviously he is a, a street level character. You don't want to have a, a bunch of cosmic threats or whatever sure. going on. But when you think of of the hand, bullseye, Elektra, is she a villain, a hero? She's mm -hmm. obviously, uh, you know, she's a foil, probably not so much of a villain, but, sure. you know, Wilson Fisk. He's got some just some wonderful villains. Even Alzi, or Al the Owlsley crew, you know, is kind of yeah, yeah. kind of hokey, but absolutely works for Hell's Kitchen. No, for sure. It's it's funny because um, Frank, uh, I I believe it was Frank who who basically hijacked Kingpin from like the Spider Man, Spider -Man. Rogues Gallery <laughs> and was just like, he's sorry, he's a Daredevil villain now, and uh, it's very rare for that to happen where a villain is hijacked. And is then undisputably a uh, primary antagonist to another hero. Like, people don't even really think of Kingpin as much as a Spider-Man villain. You know, they think of him as someone that Spider-Man fights, but he's like, a, everyone's like, he's a daredevil villain. And, um, and, and Kingpin's ability to bring in all sorts of mercenaries uh, like, like he brings in nuke in uh, you know, born again. And um, obviously bullseye and, and what's happened with bullseye uh, sort of over the years. And yeah, it's, it's really interesting sort of seeing the kind of villains that daredevils had to fight over the years and using someone like, you know, Wilson Fisk makes it very sort of easy to import in uh, other villains and, yeah, it's just it's it it was so well crafted. It, it almost makes you think like, did Frank Miller realize how great of an idea it was to bring Fisk in, or or as it was coming along, was it like, oh wow, this is an even better idea than I could have imagined? You know? Yeah, he's like a big bulked up, you know, more evil version of Lex Luthor that doesn't have quite the grand plans that Lex Luthor has, but. You know, he, he wants to be running everything in, in New York. Yeah. It just, uh, perfect villain. And it really transcended so well. that Marvel's had such a hard time getting their villains to come off the page and into the big screen or the small screen. Yeah. Obviously, Thanos. Um, and th there's been a couple of exceptions. I would say uh, Vulture from, from Spider-Man. Sure. Probably, uh, probably Red Skull. But really, I think Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin is like the best portrayal of any villain. Like he is so menacing. He's disturbing, disturbingly scary in that TV show. Yeah. I, my wife does not, she doesn't love superheroes as much as I do. Let me put it that way. When I showed her the very first, the first issue of her episode of Daredevil, like she watched the entire show in like a week. Wow. Yeah. She, no, I mean, um, you know, I, 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 Kingpin was great in uh, Into the Spider Verse as well. You, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when, whenever they use Kingpin, he, he's uh, he's been such a great character. And that that design was like the Bill Sienkiewicz, uh design for for Kingpin, which is pretty great too. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, Bill's been involved in the Daredevil mythos, doing the uh, Electra the Assassin, uh, you know, sort of miniseries with with Frank. So, uh it's a lot of good stuff. A lot of good artists and creators worked on that title. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Just the, the breath of creators is, is amazing. But what do you think about his work with the Defenders? It's something I haven't read nearly as much. Obviously, you, you see the Defenders, Luke Cage, uh, the Iron Fist, kind of come in into Daredevil's world yeah. here and there. But I, I've never really went out and read a whole lot of Defenders. Is that something I should be checking out myself? I mean, I, I was never that into Defenders outside some of the classic Defenders storylines like Avengers vs. Defenders and some things like that. Or, um, you know, some of the Heroes for Hire stuff uh, with, you know, Luke Cage on Iron Fist. My, my favorites are when he is teamed up with uh, Spider-Man. So, like, there is, um, what was it? Frank did a couple of spectacular Spider-Man issues with uh, Daredevil crossover, which I believe was his first Daredevil work. 
yes. was uh, in there. And um, he like did if you other... get the omnibus, that's the opening pages. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have that, and then there was like that gang war in like the uh, Amazing Spider-Man's, like in the, I want to say like in the two eighties, where um, you, you know they're fighting Kingpin and all these other uh, gangsters. Kingpin's like out of town. Uh, the Rose, like Kingpin's son, is involved, and like Daredevil and Spider Man are teaming up. I think it's also some of the earliest, like Eric Larson Spider Man art. But it, it, you know, stories like that are are interesting. Really, him and Spider Man have such a unique uh, relationship, revealing each other, their secret identities, and, and having that level of, of trust. So, if anything, I, I would suggest uh, diving into some more of the uh, Spider Man Daredevil. Uh, stories. So I'm glad you brought up old Spidey because I've been obviously I've been reading the Chip Zdarsky, Marco Cicchetto Daredevil since it launched. I was a big fan of Cicchetto when he was doing what was that old man Hawkeye? Hawkeye, yeah. That, he was the mm -hmm. artist on that, and then obviously Chip Zdarsky coming over from Peter Parker Spectacular Spider Man. Mm -hmm. I was pretty excited about the pairing. It's certainly been much better than I could have anticipated. Sure. But one of the really big first moments, obviously, the the, the big thing that's happened in his Daredevil run, the, re, the way that he's brought Daredevil down to his lowest, is Daredevil killed somebody trying to uh, trying to stop a crime. And yep. when Spider-Man, and he kind of confronts him in his apartment, and they have that conversation, he's like, listen, you know, if I see you out on the streets again, I will put you down, like, what you... When he kind of called him out on his stuff, they had like a like a like a hero to hero like talk. It was like yeah. really, it was very powerful. Yeah. No, it's it 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 is powerful stuff. But but yeah, um, definitely uh, definitely. Also, if uh, if people are Sadarsky fans of Daredevil and you didn't check out his Spider Man work, his Spider Man work is fantastic. Um, it, you know, but but there have been a lot of issues over the years of uh, Daredevil and Spider-Man coming together. And uh, it's definitely worth uh, checking that stuff out, especially if you're a you know, Daredevil fan, Spider-Man fan. Uh, absolutely uh, look into a lot of that stuff. So the last thing I'll talk about is, is something, I guess it's more recent. I, I guess it's controversial. I don't think it's controversial. It's sure. uh, Matt Murdock, obviously he's in prison now. He, he turned himself in. There's a there's a law out there. He gets to maintain his secret identity mm -hmm. while he serves his prison sentence. It's part of the the, the government, you know, like a government order. But sure. there is a new daredevil out there, and it is Elektra. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Elektra and Matt Murdock couldn't have more, more divergent character motivations. She literally stole a billion dollars or duped him into stealing a billion dollars before this all happened. But when you think about Elektra and the, character, the history that you have together, the fighting skills that she learned, which are very similar to Matt's, she almost feels like a natural to, to fall into the to the Daredevil mantle while obviously screwing up and seeing what a great hero Matt really is along the way kind of thing. Yeah. Were you upset with her taking over as the Daredevil? No. Um, I, I think it's a little silly in that it's not like it's not like she can dawn the daredevil costume and people would be like oh that's definitely the same character like <laughs> you know that's the same person under the mask like that that part's silly but like ultimately it's well they, they address that <laughs> yeah well they said someone someone knew you know that is wearing the daredevil suit yeah. the, wilson fist was like yeah someone's always picking up the daredevil suit yeah, no, it, exactly. You, you know, like I, I mean it. You know, more in in that idea of, of like, you know, Electra's fine on her own. She's menacing on her own. No, mm -hmm. no one was gonna be like, I wasn't scared of you when you were Electra, but now that you're Daredevil, I'm terrified. You know, like like that that element of it's like a little silly, but um, ultimately, like it's fine. I, I get why they're doing it. I get that idea of you know Daredevil. Um, for a lot of people is a more um, virtuous hero than, than certainly someone like Electra and, and she's trying to establish that she is uh, a more virtuous person right now trying to do better. Um, so to do that, you know, you're kind of taking is that. Is that you're bro. taking? Because I've taken it completely <laughs> differently. I think she's trying to dupe Matt into joining her to, to become yeah. the fist because there has to be a king and a queen and then she's 
she and Stick are going to murder Matt to fulfill I, some prophecy. I'm not saying that <laughs> she, like, I'm saying that's what she wants to get across, mm -hmm. not that that's ultimately. Yeah, that's what she be wants Matt to believe. Yeah. But he's that, such yeah. a sucker for Electra, you know he's going to fall for it. Hook, yeah. line, and sinker. You know, I, I mean, is it possible they're going to try to pull some kind of twist? that we've seen before of like, I was going to betray you, but then I, I started being good again. And, and now I know that, you know, like we, we might get that. We might get the full on betrayal. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You know, I'm we're definitely only, like, yeah. believing that she's going to have a choice to make. She's going to realize what an amazing hero Matt really is. She thought she knew him, but now that she's donned the, the cowl herself, She'll have a greater understanding, and then she won't be able to do it, and then she'll probably kill Stick. Yeah. And the hand will still be there, and she'll ruin everything. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> something along those lines, for, for sure. And uh, if that's not what we end up seeing exactly, it's certainly going to be something that almost happened, and they decided on something else. Me, personally, I, I'm loving Chip Zdarsky's run. Mm -hmm. Is it Frank Miller's run? Whose Daredevil run is Frank Miller's run? It's, it's, you're never going to eclipse that, but it's certainly, you know, it belongs there in the conversation of, of yeah. great Daredevil runs, at least so far. You can always drop the ball at some point, but I don't see that happening. Zdarsky's been probably the best writer at Marvel for a couple of years now, in my opinion, just as far as the quality that he puts out. Yeah, he's great. And, uh, couldn't be more excited. Is there anything else that you, you wanted to say about Daredevil that we didn't kind of get to here before we wrap this conversation up? Uh, one last thing, uh, another one, it's been a few years since I read it, but uh, one of the more underrated stories I, I think is Daredevil Father uh, from uh, Joe Quesada. It's uh, probably one of the last things he did at Marvel that he both wrote and penciled. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting story uh, about Matt Murdock try, like, taking the case for this like killer and it's Father's Day and he's reflecting on his relationship with his father over the years. And it's it's a really good story uh, that I think at this point in, in the discussion has kind of flown under the radar. Uh, so if you haven't read that, I, I would also suggest go back and, and dig that one up. It, it's a good read. Also, if you only think of Kevin Smith as kind of a boob on, on social media these days, go back and read his Daredevil like Marvel Knight stuff. He was a really, really good creator at one point. Yeah, and and you know what? Funny you mention that because Marvel put together uh, a Marvel Knights Daredevil omnibus that has both uh, Kevin Smith's run and Father's Day uh, in it, or you know, uh, Daredevil Father rather. And um, that is still in print. I think you could get it on places like cheap graphic novels or something like that. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't read any of that stuff, it takes place right before the Bendis run. Uh, grab a hold of that and read it. It's a good time. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy the amount of wonderful creators who worked on Daredevil. Joe, thank you so much for joining me today talking about something that Marvel got right. Hopefully next week we'll be talking about a character that DC's been getting right. Not sure who that's going to be quite yet, but I'm sure we can figure something out. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. I mean, they, they haven't worked with some characters in a while, so we could just pick one of those. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. Thanks a lot, buddy. No problem. Thank you.